King of glory, the Saviour. Switch it on. The Saviour of the world. And Lord, we confess that our only right to be here is because Jesus Christ, your Son, gave his life for us. In ourselves, we are not worthy, but in Christ, we are loved, we are accepted, and we are welcome to come before your throne. Help us in this time of public worship to keep our focus on you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you. Amen. Well, welcome to Quorn uh, <clears throat> Baptist Church, whether you're with us in person or are watching on YouTube or listening to a recording. May God bless you today. Uh, David, I can, I, I'm getting a bit of uh, resonance around, so can I be turned down a, a bit? I think uh, you can still hear me okay. That's good, great. Um, you may have noticed the new poster, posters as you came in. I hope you read them. I'd just like to reinforce its message. The seats on the balcony to my left in particular are for those who are vulnerable and so please do not go up there unless you are wearing a mask and you apply social distancing. We also ask that if you're positive for COVID or think you might be positive, then you stay away. If you've been in contact with someone who has tested positive, please, if you can, take a lateral flow test before you come so that you are confident that you are not infectious. Please follow this guidance out of love for your brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you. Well, if you're able, please stand as we uh, worship God in song. Thank you. 
just to say, it would, it would be nice if um, uh, we didn't have to uh, repeat the, uh, the call to be quiet, that we actually just came and were quiet for those five minutes before the service started. And uh, so we can just, uh, so I don't have to say that again. Is that okay? We're all okay with that. That's good. Um, <clears throat> well, Richard, it's over to you. Right. Good morning, everybody. Right. And I've, I've got some party rings here that, that, that the Sunday Club people can take into Sunday Club, maybe. If, if, if you answer my questions, that'd be good. Yeah. Hey, I know. Right. Okay. So um, how do you show someone that you care about them? What sort of thing might you do? How might you show someone that, that you care about them? What do you reckon? Any thoughts? Ethan? By giving them a card. That's a really good idea. Fabulous. By giving them a card. Yes. Saying that you love them. That's really lovely as well. Yes, that's really good. So giving them a card, saying that you love them. And so all those things that you could, oh, yes. Do this. That's amazing. Do their shopping for them. That would be wonderful. <laughs> if, if they pay you back, was that? Yeah. Oh, if, well, that's, <laughs> that's an important detail there. Yeah, very good. Very good. So how do we know that, that Jesus cares about us? Any idea? How, how do we know that Jesus cares about us? We have Eloise. Because he loves us. That's really amazing. Yes, he loves us. Absolutely. Ethan. Yeah, because he died on the cross for us, didn't he? So we can live, live forever. He, he created the world we live in and, and he cares enough for us that he died on the cross for us. And there are loads of stories in the Bible that, that tell us what Jesus did when he was on earth, the things he did that, that demonstrated how much he cared and loved about the people around him when he was there on, on the earth 2,000 years ago, both his special friends and the people that he just met. Uh, can anyone think of any sort of things that he did when he was on the, in, in the, in, on the earth 2,000 years ago to say how much he loved people? Yes. Uh, any sort of special things he did? Any, any miracles? Sorry, 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 sorry. He kept his promises. He kept his, that's amazing. He did keep his promises. The only person who, who always, always, always kept his promises. And that's amazing. Absolutely. Anything else? What amazing thing? Yes, Ethan. Sorry, darling. He made humans. That's fantastic. He made humans. Yes, Ailey. He did. He did loads of miracles, like learn, turn, le learning what turning water into wine. Absolutely. And in Sunday Club today, those of, those of us who are going into Sunday Club today, you're going to be learning about a miracle that Jesus did to help more than 4,000 people at one time, um, showing them how much he cared about them uh, and immediately caring about their immediate physical needs as well as their spiritual needs. And there are loads of things in the Bible that tells us how much Jesus loves us. Now, one of the stories, one of the things he told his disciples was love each other as I have loved you. And he wasn't talking about a sort of a lovey dovey love. He was talking them uh, to have a sort of the same selfless love for each other as those around him. OK, and then after he said, love each other as I've loved you. He then said, greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. And as you said, Ethan, yeah, that's right. Jesus um, laid down his life for all of us so we can have life um, forever. Now, the Message Bible puts that in a slightly different way. It says, put your life on the lines for your friends. What do you think that might mean? Put your life on the line for your friends, yeah? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Stepping up for them, absolutely. Stepping up for them, doing things that, that might sort of putting you out of the way to help your friends, to help those around us. So Jesus said, um, love each other as I have loved you. And then, and as you're right, Ethan, we sometimes have a bit of a choice, don't we? Whether or not we step up for our friends, whether or not we do stuff for our friends, whether or not we go out of the way to help other people. And the amazing thing is, Jesus says we can ask him for help to do that sort of thing. He gives us the power to be able to do that. So Jesus did some amazing things a couple of thousand years ago when he was on the earth. He turned water into wine. He did something for 4,000 people that you're going to hear about today. Um, but he still does amazing things today. And we can help him so that we can do amazing things. We can ask him for his help so that we can do amazing things um, for him today 
as well. Okay, and then now I think we're going to sing a song about about how amazing God is because of who made who made the ground that I stand on. Yeah. So if anyone wants to come and help me with the actions, you can do, or you can do the action sitting down. Now that you've uh, sat down, we've got another song, and uh, as we sing it, uh, the young folk may go out to Sunday Club. The song is Everyone Needs Compassion. If you're able, you can stand. Glory. 
Well, Richard's busy today as he's due to lead us in our prayers. Thank you, Richard. Okay, let us pray. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God, so much for the children in this church. Uh, Lord, it's a strange world we live in at the moment. We pray for the pressures that our children are under with the microscope of social media. We pray that they would seek their worth and identity through you. We pray that they would know just how much that you love and care for them. We pray for each one of those children that's gone out to Sunday Club, that each one of those and those known to us would, would come to know and love you. Thank you, God, for the Sunday Club and the Sunday Club teachers as well, and give them patience and love and wisdom. Lord, we pray for the schools in the village. Thank you, they're schools of a Christian heritage. We pray for the ongoing ministries in the school, such as the open the book assemblies that are done by teams from, from both of the churches. We pray for the leadership teams and teachers of both of those schools, that you give them the wisdom for the many difficult decisions they have to make. And we pray that many teachers, many more teachers will come to know and love you. We pray for first steps and baby steps and all of the families that come to those events. Give those leaders a vision to show how they can engage with the children and the parents and carers. Thank you also for the weekly coffee break in the hall and the other contact with the older generation in our community. We thank you for those people. It's just as difficult and challenging time for, for older people as it is for younger folk as well. And we pray for our older people. We pray for those who are worried about, about the cost of living, about all the other worries at the moment. And we also lift organisations such as the Salvation Army and the Trestle Trust who are working to support people in need. We think about our own response to this situation. Help us to see how we can be your hands and your feet where you want us to be. And Lord, we lift the situation in Ukraine to you. It just seems so terrible and we can, we can feel so hopeless. But you, Lord, you're the giver of life. You're the author of salvation. We pray for your will to be done here. We pray for peace and healing. We thank you for those families who are now in our neighbourhood. We pray that you would give us hospitable hearts. Thank you for the coffee morning yesterday. And we pray for relationships formed. Give us wisdom here. Lord, we pray for those who are ill in body or mind or spirit. We pray for, for Ruth, Lord. We pray that you would, you would be with her now and the people looking after her and for Don. And Lord, we lift those as well personally known to us in other situations who might be ill in body, mind or spirit. Lord, we pray for wisdom for us as a church. Help us to use our time and resources wisely. Thank you for our minister, Ian, and we pray for his sabbatical, that you'll give him refreshing and renewal. Pray for the deacons as they look after things while Ian is away. And we pray for the consideration of changes to the building. Pray that whatever changes are made, they'll be pleasing to you and what we need to do as a church. Amen. And often at this stage, you might give an offering, but since COVID, we haven't been passing around things. And so there are, there are plates at the back of the church and also in, in both backs of the church that sort are of over there and, and as you go out as well. And a lot of people give by, by bank transfer anyway now, um, but we'll just pray for that offering as if we just received the offering maybe. So thank you, God, for your provision. Everything we have is yours anyway. We pray that you would guide each one of us as to what we should be doing with our own time and resources. And we pray for us as a church that you give us wisdom with how we should use the financial offerings to your glory. Amen. Well, are you feeling like you're going through a storm at the moment? 
and let God be your refuge. And this song is for you. Hide me now. We're thinking today, as you might have guessed from all the songs, we're thinking about love. Um, and uh, we're looking at uh, 1 John again, and starting to read in chapter 3 at uh, verse 11, which if you've got a pew Bible there, it's on page 1227. This is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue but with actions and in truth. This then is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence whenever our hearts condemn us. 
But God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. Those who obey his commands live in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit. Sorry, I'm going to leap on to verse 7, chapter 4, verse 7. I just realized that that's next week's reading. Verse 7. Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the father has sent the son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world, we are like him. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he's a liar. But anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. <coughs> Amen. <clears throat> David, can you turn me down just a fraction more? Yes, I'm, it may not be, you may not be hearing it, but I'm hearing a boom come back at every end of every sentence and it's just off-putting for me. So just a brief prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we ask, Lord, that you would open our minds, our ears, our hearts to what you have to say to us today. Lord, that we might be changed. For Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be thinking today about brotherly and sisterly love. It is the new commandment which Christ gave to the church. It was new, as we said last week, because the situation was new for everyone involved. And suddenly they were born into a new family, God's family. And here is the eldest brother who we all look up to saying, if you want to be like me, then you've got to love each other. Jesus, when he prayed for us on the night before he died, revealed to us the heart of God for his people. Uh, 
it doesn't matter. It's it's uh, hang on a second. Saps. No, it's not doing any. Oh, amazing that this is not infrared. This is radio. This is, shouldn't care where it's pointing. Anyway, we got the first half of the verse there. That all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. This is, of course, Jesus speaking here. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. And that's encouraging because that's how we're going to end up. This prayer that Jesus prayed is going to be answered and that's how we're going to end up. That they may be one as we are one. Complete unity. We're growing towards unity and love for one another. Praise God. But we're not there yet. Sad to say. We have received from God a new nature. We are now his children. And as part of that, we have a natural affinity and love for each other. And so Paul writes to the Thessalonians, now about brotherly love, we do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all the brothers throughout Macedonia. Yet we urge you, brothers, to do so more and more. The natural affinity that God has created in us is just the start. It's not enough. We have got to work at loving each other more and more. Why do you think that Paul wrote, you love all the brothers throughout Macedonia? Why didn't he just say you love all the brothers? If to love our brothers meant a mushy feeling, then no doubt we could love all of them. But our family love can only be seen in our dealings with fellow believers when we actually serve them, bless them, support and encourage them. The Thessalonians were located right in the middle of the Macedonian churches and they were busy assisting the churches in their region. They weren't insular, just thinking of their own congregation. We have then received from Jesus the command to love each other. And Paul urges us to work at loving more and more. And John, throughout this first letter, repeatedly reminds us of our duty to love. For instance, in 1 John 4, 21, and God has given us the command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. So loving one another isn't a side issue. We have Christ's example. He loved us. In fact, he loved us so much that he laid down his life for us. We have his prayer for us and we have his command. And we even have the resources ready at hand. Love comes from God. And so we don't have to struggle in our own strength to love. We have all we need to go God's way. And yet we still fail to love our brothers and sisters, as Jesus would do. And John, he puts us to shame. He embarrasses us. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. 
John is suggesting that we aren't doing what we ought to be doing. And what is more, this ought is a matter of debt. That's what the Greek word implies. We have a debt to love one another because Christ died for us and because God loved us. However, from the apostles down to ourselves, the church has failed to fully discharge this debt of loving one another. It is an awesome charge, isn't it? But God is with us in this. And, and though we fail, that's no reason for us to give up. Let's keep on working at it. Amen? Amen. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. When God saved us, he didn't just bring us into a wonderful one-to-one -one loving relationship with himself. He brought us into a, a family. And he demands that everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. Notice he doesn't say children but child. And this makes it inexcusable to despise or look down on or not get along with any of our brothers and sisters. We can't feel pleased with ourselves for loving the many if there is one that we don't love. Is there one here that you don't love? Maybe you feel they don't love me, so why should I love them? But you're here to please God, not yourself. And he wants you to love them. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And at the start of that verse, it says, if anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother. He's a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has seen. If we want to be able to honestly say that we love God, we cannot hold back from loving his child. If there is even one believer who we do not love, do we dare say or sing, I love you, Lord? Will God be happy? while we close our hearts to even one of his children. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Let's think about that for a moment. God loves his children, doesn't he? You agree with that? Yeah? God loves his children. And he wants to love each one of you to the full. God wants to use every channel at his disposal to pour out his love on you. And each of us is one such channel through which God can pour out his love to his children. But if we refuse to love one of his children... We are preventing his love for that child being complete. That's why it's important. How do you feel about that? You can stop God's love being completely expressed to one of his children. What power you possess. Do you want to do that, though? Think of it like this. If you turn on both taps to fill your bath, does it bother you if one tap is blocked? I think it does. Depending on which tap is blocked, you're going to get a scalding hot bath or a freezing cold one. Your experience of bathing is not going to be complete. It won't be perfect. God wants to love through you and through me. Don't block the channel. 
Still the same verse, but just a different title there. We are told that no one has ever seen God. Yet when he loves through us, it makes his love visible, tangible. It's not that God cannot impart an awareness of his love that is so strong that we feel the warmth of it, but then he knows best which channels are right to use on different occasions. And he wants the freedom to use those channels. By letting God's love flow through us, we allow him to use us to bless his children. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean we just get to do pleasant things all the time. Sometimes we're the one chosen to help them face unpleasant truths about themselves. God's love isn't always appreciated by God's children. Criticism hurts. So if someone rebukes you, then don't reject their words. Accept their rebuke as though it were motivated by God's love and by a desire to do you good. Even if their criticism isn't valid, don't get offended by it. Thank them for wanting to help you and say you'll talk to God about it. Who, who knows? You may find when you stand before God that they were actually right. If we want to be used to help others, we need to be willing to be helped by others. So what happens if we do not love? Well, we hinder our own lives. You can see what a hindrance a, a block channel is. I keep pressing this button and it doesn't work. And it still doesn't work. I think it's the batteries in here, you know, I think. <clears throat> so whoever loves his brother lives in the light and there is nothing in him to make him stumble. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. He does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded him. You see, if we do not love, we hinder our own lives. It's night. The lights are fused. What happens if you try and move around the house? You stumble over furniture. You stub your toe. You break things. When we despise or scorn a brother or sister, when we enjoy his or her misfortune and delight to see her failing, when we speak slanderously or hurtfully about them, then we are walking in darkness. We are doing untold damage in others' lives as we go, and we are stumbling in our own lives. Romans 8, 28, you know this well, don't you? And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. First of all, those who love him. Well, you can't love him if you don't love one another. That's the first thing. But the second thing about that verse, that lovely verse, is God's involved in your life and he can take care of things. And so let dad sort the squabble. If there's a squabble between you and another believer, hand it over to God. That's how we should respond when a fellow believer is being hurtful towards us. Commit your cause to God and don't try to fight fire with fire. Don't gather a clique against him or her even if he or she raises up an army of supporters against you. Just leave it with Father. And there's no need to pray accusingly to God. That's Satan's work, isn't it? And we don't want to side with him, do we? Instead, we pray blessing and mercy upon our brother or sister. And we look to their good and we love them. That is loving them to pray for them, to pray blessing upon them, even when they are hurtful towards us. In order to love such a worldly brother, we need to be safe, strong, and secure in the great love that God has 
for us. The NRV renders 1 John 4, 16 as, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. And what this means is that <clears throat> I am certain that God wants the best for me. If God loves me, then I don't need to worry what others might plot or do. Dad will sort it out for me. I'm certain that God will make sure that I don't miss out on any good thing if I trust him. And I'm certain that God will sort out the problem if I leave the fight with him. You see, when I, when I stand aside and let God take charge of the squabble, he can go in and act. But when I insist on fighting my own corner, I muddy the water. And he refuses to come in on either side. Whose side are you on, Dad? Neither. Whose side are you on, son? Are you on my side and the family's or your own side? What do we really want as the solution to conflict with a brother or sister? Is it to bring them down? Or is it to see them strengthened in Christ, living for Christ, fulfilling their special role in Christ's body? Our goal determines how we react in such situations. If we want to defeat them, we then we fight and we hurt them. If we want to see them living for God, we care for them and we pray for them. We need to recognize that God's spirit lives in the lives of all his children. He accepts each one of us just as we are. He loves us despite our failings. He has a plan to develop us and to change us and it isn't by smashing us into the ground at every opportunity. God calls us to join him in loving his children, exercising forgiveness and tolerance, understanding others' weaknesses, letting them be who they are and not condemning them for it. This is no more than we desire for ourselves, is it? We've got everything going for us, haven't we? We've got a new family. We've got a loving father. We've got an eternal future where we are indeed going to enjoy loving our brothers and sisters with the pure heart of love that is in Christ. Well, let's get on with the job. Let's love one another now for love comes from God. Now, you know, this is agape love. The love that God calls us to doesn't require us to feel warmth. It isn't an emotional response that God is asking of us. It isn't a Jesus wept situation, but rather a Jesus died situation. Sacrificial service is what demonstrates God's love. Oh, I pressed the wrong button now. It worked that time. <clears throat> Come on, you can do it. Only one left. That's all. Oh, there we go. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. Actually, there is one more. Oh. I don't know what's happening. There we go. Work at loving. Love each of God's children. God wants to love through you. Don't be a block channel. Let dad sort our squabbles. And love is costly. 
Those are just the thoughts we've had as we've gone through that passage, aren't they? We've got to work at it. Work at it with each of God's children. The joy God wants to love through you. Don't be a block channel. And let dad sort our squabbles. Let's pray. Father, we want to open our lives to you so that you can pour your love through us. We ask you to help us to love all of your children just as you do. May your love be complete as we allow it to flow through us to your hardened or hurting child, to your bitter or isolated child, to your critical or criticised child. Let your child feel loved as your love reaches them through us. To your honour, to their blessing and to our joy. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is uh, In heavenly love abiding, no change my heart shall fear. Please do stand if you're able and we'll sing together. <clears throat> God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can I just remind you that at 12 o'clock we have an interment of ashes out the front. If at 12 o'clock you're leaving and going through the front, please go through quietly. Um, please do not stand out the front talking to people and chatting away. That would be most disrespectful. 
Um, so please just go through that door, straight out through the gate and off. Thank you very much. And uh, if there are children, if they could be kept from running around the front, not that they do these days, but just a reminder, please, would you uh, make sure they don't? Thank you very much. Thank you. And tea and coffee, as usual, through there. Thank <laughs> you.